Hello and welcome to today's Shorts Roundtable. I'm Paul Sloop, the Short Films Programming Manager for the Cleveland International Film Festival, or the Shorts Guy as most of you know me, and I'll be hosting today's talk. Before we get started though, we want to take a moment here to offer special thanks to PNC for sponsoring our Filmmaker Conversation content throughout this year's festival. On today's roundtable, we'll be joined by filmmakers representing some of the short films included in Local Hero Shorts Program 1. With that in mind, allow me to welcome our guests to today's conversation. Hello everyone and welcome. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Uh, to get us started, what I'd last, like to ask each of you to do is introduce yourself, uh, your film, what you did on the film, and where you're calling in from today. And we'll start with uh, Nick to my left. <clears throat> Hi, I'm, I'm Nick Cavalier, and uh, my film is uh, Bodega de Edgar, and I'm calling in from Cleveland, Ohio. Just got into town. Hi, I'm Aubrey Keith. Um, we're calling in from Cincinnati. I'm the director, producer, and editor of Stuck Here Still. I'm Joe Cook, also Cincinnati, Stuck Here Still, and I was the co-director and cinematographer. Hi, I'm Eli Manos. Um, I am the director, cinematographer, and film scorer of I Wish You Were Real, and I am calling in from Cleveland, Ohio. Hi, I'm Nick Kuhar, the director, uh, producer, co-producer, editor, and DOP for the music video Envy. Hi, my name is Rosemary Gramajo. My film is The Effects, and I'm calling in from Cleveland, Ohio, and I'm the writer of The Effects. Hi, I'm Keenan Wetzel. I'm the writer and director for Still Home, and I'm calling in from Detroit, Michigan. Great. Again, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, this program used to be called the Ohio Shorts Program for many years uh, in rebranding its local heroes, but it still basically means the same thing, explaining the variety of locations in our state uh, that are represented by today's films and filmmakers. So the first question to get us started that we'd like to ask you all is to share what was the inspiration for making your film or what led you to make this particular film? And again, we'll start with Nick. Uh, yeah, I, um, I, I met uh, the winemaker who was the subject of the film uh, in 2014. His name's Edgar Torres and he, uh, he came from uh, Mexico uh, in the 1980s illegally with his family for a better life. And it's, you know, it's American dream story. So he, that is what inspired me. It's an underdog story and it just happens to have wine attached to it. So what I found most inspiring about his story is just, it's like a kind of Martin Scorsese rags to riches naturally. And so I just tried to get out of the way and point the camera and do the best I could with that. It's a, it's, it is an inspiring story and we're thrilled to be able to share it, Nick. And you're back with a alum filmmaker, uh, back with yet another film. Good to have you back, Nick. Good to be here. <laughs> Um, for, yeah, for our film, Stuck Here Still, um, two of our mentors and fellow filmmakers, Steve Bognar and Julia Reichert, they approached us about basically wanting to capture something that was going on during COVID time um, because we have never experienced something like this. So they had reached out to us just about following different stories with some other filmmakers. Um, and do you want to add anything? Yeah, I, I'm we were very lucky to have them send us like a story on, on a silver platter, basically. Uh, I know they probably would have been making films themselves, but um, they were both at an age risk. Um, and we weren't really sure when we started making it, you know, how widespread and how severe people would be affected by the pandemic. Obviously, a year later, we're still feeling the effects, but um, it was it was an interesting time trying to make a film during all of that. A film made during the time and telling a great story from our state in that time. So thank you for sharing that thank with you. us. Eli. Hi, yes. So our, our film, I Wish You Were Real, was a uh, contender and winner of the Cleveland 40 out, uh, Cleveland 48 Hour Film Project uh, last fall. Um, and so we, uh, our genre was silent film. And so something that uh, my brother Sean and I wanted to do was we wanted to experiment uh, especially since it was our first time running our own uh, team, we wanted to experiment with a sort of an idea of a psychological drama about someone who is struggling in a uh, really terrible relationship um, and how they have this sort of imaginary friend who they see around the area who gives them comfort and whether it's helpful or not kind of tells them what they want to hear. 
And it's sort of um, kind of about how a lot of times in um, and a lot of times of trouble, sometimes we kind of turn to an imaginary, imaginative figure, an imaginative idea. And it's sometimes wondering um, how far can one go um, before it can start to become uh, unhelpful and how it can start to get um, kind of hurtful. And so, yeah, so it was, it was um, a lot of it was very experimental. We wanted to, um, it was my first time ever running a camera. And so we were just, um, yeah, so we just wanted to, um try the psychological drama the 48 hour film project has a way of teaching you a lot of things really fast yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. thanks for sharing Eli. nick yeah absolutely um i'm i'm just always been really involved in the music scene at cleveland in cleveland and um i just wanted like you know you'd see some great artists play the happy dog or um like the beachland tavern there's 10 people there like there's almost as many people on stage as there are in the crowd and, you know, going to the SIF, you just see it's packed all the time. And so I've been encouraging a handful of musicians that I thought had the budget to put together like a music video that would be cool within city limits, you know, like submit it to the SIF. Like, let's let's try to like bridge the gap between the music scene and then also the filmmaking scene in Cleveland uh, with the film commission. And um, so my friend Stephanie, she happened to have like a really good EP that she had finished right before COVID sort of hit and and then she kind of threw the challenge to me of do you think we could make a film very very cheaply um where we kind of wouldn't have to provide any lights and so we used um super pinball electric that's got all these great just kind of like uh in-house neon lights and the pinball machines uh and she's like can we also find a way to film it where everyone stays six feet apart or more uh and so we used a track for basically every part of the film we used really specific uh, prime lenses so we could have close-up shots but be far away from people and it was cool like we had to be we had to kind of use the ingenuity of the moment of covid um to create this film and it really gave us a tight sandbox to play in um but it let us be really creative and, and it was probably the sole creative fun thing that i did since quarantine hit so it was kind of like a personal um soul saver for me so it was great. Um, I just love being a part of it. And really glad that Sif picked it. What's great is you're sort of anticipating something I, as a programmer, have been trying to find and get. We've we've had typically one music video in every program for the last couple of years, and once again this year we have one kicking off each program. So that continue to pitch that to the local artists because it is we like the idea too of introducing musical artists through film that way every year. Thank so you. Thank you, Nick. Mm -hmm. Rosemary. Yeah, um, so the uh, film The Effects is actually based on true events. So it's based on my life and what I went through, you know, growing up in a household where my parent was an immigrant. And it also talks about, you know, what other kids go through growing up in a household where, you know, a child's an immigrant, the pain and the suffering and that little, you know, anxiety of like one day my parents here, the next day they're not here. So and like it also shows something that I want to do in the future. It shows my love for music and how music really took me out of a dark place in my life. In the film, I also wrote a song that like, you know, it's played at the end of the film. And so basically it's just a film to show the people that we all go through struggles, you know, and there's also there's always an effect on what's going on in our life. And so the film really shows you what goes on in the life of a child of an immigrant. You know, we always see the parent and their struggle, but we never actually see the kid and what they're going through. And so that's what the film shows. Thank you for sharing that story. Stephanie, you were able to join us, mm -hmm. um, but you don't know exactly where we're at. So let me help out here. Um, what we'd like to ask uh, you is, how did you come to become involved in the film, The Effects? Yes, yeah, so I'm the founding executive director of Art of Me. Art of Me is a nonprofit organization. We work with young people to help them create stories. Um, as Rosemary eloquently described her story, she's actually the winning student of our story to film contest. So she had the best story out of all the stories submitted in a greater Cleveland area that answered the question, what is power community? So I stand here just to represent work that we do to bring young stories such as Rosemary's to the forefront to have them seen not only locally but on a national platform. Excellent. Th thank you, Stephanie. Uh, Keenan. Hi, yes. Yeah, so Still Home, the inspiration for that was around the city of East Liverpool, Ohio. It's where my, my father grew up and a place that I have fond memories of going to when I was a kid. And it 
was kind of like a cousin that you see every so often. It just keeps changing. And unfortunately for the worst in this case, was still home with East Liverpool. I, I was seeing this beautiful city that I remembered going to very fondly change over time. And then I started to hear when I got older, it being in the news, uh, specifically around the opioid epidemic and it being really a center of, of one of the calling cards of the city where an, an industry left and it was left with opioid crisis um, to deal with. And so I wanted to see how much of that was true, quite honestly. And so we went down there with a very small crew of people and didn't really know anybody, but my dad's name and a couple of his old friends. And we were able to speak to the mayor and police officers and really get a good look at uh, what was really going on in the city and not just a, a national kind of outside perspective on the city. So yeah, that was the inspiration for Still Home. Uh, you know, from our email exchanges, Keenan, I grew up in Newell, West Virginia, which is right across the river from East Liverpool. As a matter of fact, the bridge, which was the only bridge for a long time that connects Ohio right. and West Virginia there is the Newell Bridge, not the East Liverpool, despite Newell being this really small, small town. But yeah, so East Liverpool was basically home to me in the, the Ohio River Valley there. So I was watching all these images in your film that were like taking me back to my youth, but a place that's totally changed from when I lived there in the 70s and 80s. So, but thank you for sharing the story. It's, it's a very powerful story. Uh, the next thing I'll ask you all to share with the audience is, you know, if we were live and in person Q&A's, one of the things we'd always want to know is, okay, so what's that one thing? What's the backstory in the making of the film? Or really any story that you just know the audience would appreciate knowing to giving them sort of like an inside baseball kind of thing to your film. So uh, each of you give that some thought and take turns sharing it. And I'll start again with Nick. Uh, yeah, so I have, I have uh, two kind of short things to share, actually. I, I brought my crew all the way from Cleveland and we actually took a trip uh, across the country in a grip truck. <laughs> So, well, uh, we, we had, it was, you know, it was a passion project. It was a labor of love. And so, um, we drove like two of the guys flew in with gear and then we drove the rest of the gear, me and another crew member, Luke. And, um, when we were shooting, um, you know, we, it was in California in the central coast where all the wine is grown, a lot of the wine. And, um, it was very tough and rugged shoot, you know, up on the Hills and everything. And we, uh, Mikey tell our key grip, uh, he's, he works on big, um, in Cleveland and LA, like union, he's a union gaffer grip. And he was saying, telling us a story, how everyone says it's going to be great on set, like no matter what, even if it's not. And when you're shooting documentary, you really don't know where you're going. Right. I mean, you, you kind of have a general idea, but you're sort of, you know, building the airplane as you're flying it. Right. And, uh, and we we're sitting there on the Hill about to do our last shot. It's a scene where Edgar is taking the rock and up on sunset and talking about the uh, observatory and coming longing to be there from Mexico with his family. And as we're doing it, Mikey's just like, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. And Edgar said he's going to print T-shirts for his harvest, for his business to say, it's going to be great. We hope it's good. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Thank you, Nick. Thanks. Sure. Joe and Aubrey. Yeah, um, for us, both of us are more interested in like verite documentaries. And so I think what actually ended up happening with us for this film is um, our subject, her interview was so strong that we decided to base a documentary around an interview, which is just like not very common for us. So it was definitely a filmmaking challenge. I remember being terrified doing the interview too, which yeah. is like, it's not something you want to be in a situation as a filmmaker. You want to make your subjects feel comfortable. But um, our subject had recently had COVID-19, almost died from it. And so we were hearing, you know, things going from bad to worse every day in the news. And we showed up to her apartment to do this interview. And, you know, we've got masks and face coverings. Gloves. On and yeah. Gloves. So we look like horrible, you know, covered figures and we're trying to make this connection and boom poles at 20 feet we're away, six from, feet her. away yeah, from her. Yeah. It, it was a, a strange interview, but uh, she opened up right away and it all turned out. I think, yeah, so. I think so too. Yeah. I, that had to be quite the shoot. I think we've all spent the year trying to switch the idea that mask, Ooh, who's the guy in the mask to who's the guy without the mask. What's, what's the deal? Yeah. <laughs> totally role reversal of everything. Thank you guys. Eli. Well, uh, Paul, like you were mentioning earlier, there's a lot to learn uh, while you're doing a 48. And so uh, while we were on the shoot, we were um, there, there's a there was a lot of things that we were kind of picking up that we realized we we're going to have to accommodate for. And, and one of the things was uh, we didn't have 
uh, the best lighting equipment. I knew I just had my uh, camera and we had to make do as best we could. And so some of the shots during the day were perfectly fine. But when things started to happen uh, at night, we started to find ways to use the house lighting to try to um, still be able to keep everything lit up. And um, and we had a few of our uh, actors also kind of um, also being also like uh, crew members as well. Uh, especially um, uh, one of the actors, Joe Quinn, uh, came uh, was able to help us with a lot of lighting things. Even just sometimes, just having his phone and just shining flashlight just made a world of difference. Uh, one uh, very, uh, ex uh, very uh, nerve wracking part. We were shooting a scene on a beach that, and it, there's uh, various scenes that take place on the beach, but we shot them all at once and we had to fight the sun going down <laughs> and so between each of the shots we were practically sprinting <laughs> in between scenes and um so it probably looked very funny to everyone who might have watching us just holding a camera a tripod and just sprinting as best we can to the next shot and and um but i was very happy with um with how it came out um we had a very small cast and crew it was only including myself and and my brother sean it was just six of us and um and everyone i mean people as actors they were willing to also be crew members and and help carrying anything and help give notes and you know everyone was a real trooper on the set and they really really gave it their all and everyone was absolutely wonderful to work with so i'm really glad uh, that's, that's great uh, i'm waiting for someone to make the definitive short film about making a 48-hour film because <laughs> i know that's it's loaded with potential content there for for short script nick yeah, um, I, one thing, I mean, I've, I've taught film at a local high school for almost a decade. And the one thing I always tell my students is, you know, especially teenagers coming in, like they they like to run and go and they like to like kind of just play fast and lose the stuff. And like they like the chaotic um, nature of like making short films. But I'm always like, I think the best chaos happens when you're really planned. And then like one crazy thing will happen and you can actually capitalize on it. That happened for this film. Um, I had a former student who's, he's now almost graduated from, I think, Wesleyan, uh, but just had like a, the right look for um, the music video. And he was gonna be the Oracle. Um, Cause there's someone who's like um, kind of throwing down tarot cards throughout um, the music video. And that's like a key conceit of it. And he had to pull out uh, like just, I think a couple days before, I think he had developed some COVID symptoms. So our camera operator was just like, I know this girl, she might be great. like. It might not work out, but like, let's like, I don't know who else to bring in. Her name was Bailey. Uh, and she was awesome. Um, like she, we didn't know she was a dancer. And so at the very end of the shoot, we were kind of just doing like cool moody shots. And we're like, is there anything else we could do while we're pushing in and out on the track, like into you? And she's like, well, I could kind of do an interpretive dance and like in one take completely just off, like off the top of her head, she did this really awesome interpretive thing. And then we like it, not double exposed it, but we like eight times exposed it and put different color filters on and editing. And it was my favorite part of the whole video. And it was a really happy accident, but I just love like everything else, like every single shot and prop and placement and piece of lighting was like just dialed into a T. And so it kind of left the space for that one happy accident to happen. Um, and it was just such a joy to, to be surprised um, behind the camera. It's, I, I find it amazing how many times there are what I call the cosmic string stories behind short films, things that you did not, you did everything that you could and then something showed up that made it even better. And I always think it's like the, you meet the universe halfway and then it offers you some gifts for doing so. It's like you do all you can and then we'll join you for the rest. So great story, Nick, thanks. Rosemary. Yeah, um, so I have like a lot to say, but like it's like my first time, you know, ever like in the whole like filmmaking scene, like, I remember when Stephanie told me that I won the contest, right? She came into my classroom. I was in the middle of studying. Like, you won! And so then, wow, I won. I'm going to be, like, now making a film during summer. I remember it being so hot. Um, my, little, my whole family was with me because, you know, the film is about my family. And so my little brother was just, like, annoyed. He didn't want to be there. He didn't want the cameras to interview him. He didn't want nothing to do with anything. But I, I, I loved it, you know? They, and those are, there's also like um like one of my favorite scenes is like the dress, just this blue dress that pops that, that pops up in the scene, and it's the scene where like 
the girl who like plays me, like she's having a father daughter dance um, in like a quinceanera, which is, you know, the really big party that we have, you know, with 300 invites and people like that. So she's actually using my dress and like the place where her room was, like all of those decorations were from my room. So like my room was like empty for like a whole week. And like all, all of the stuff was over there. I also, I, I enjoyed like also the recording of the song at the end that I wrote. Like it was my first time making a movie, my first time in a like a song recording studio. It was, it was amazing. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> Rosemary, for whatever we're lacking by not being in person, we can feel your enthusiasm. I, I love it. It's infectious. <laughs> thank you for sharing your story and your enthusiasm. This, okay. we've all, we all love film, but you're reminding us why we get so excited about it. So thank you for sharing that. Stephanie, tell us. Tell yeah. us Go ahead. So the story Rosemary wrote, it, it went from a four page story, which was her winning story to a 27 page script. So imagine that we filmed it during this Rosemary. So one of the hottest weekends in the greater Cleveland, Lorraine area, because we filmed it in two locations. And it was 27 pages. We filmed it over three days. So just imagine that. It was a management probably of about over 100 folks. Because the very final scene, we have a full um, a full hall. Because it's actually performances that are being made. All ages of folks, from my little ones, all the way to age of, in their 60s, individuals. And it was about 90 degrees that weekend. Mm. And it was amazingly hot but our amazing film crew did an excellent job in delivering in three days. So think about how much we slept that entire week. It's <laughs> great. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you guys for, for sharing your film and your story. Keenan. Yeah, I think the stories that come to mind for me are how open people were in East Liverpool to actually share their perspective. I, I think you do, you make films in LA or New York or other places that aren't the, polite Midwest, you find that people won't talk to you. They're very guarded. In Liverpool, people wanted to tell you the, the, tr the truth of, of their experience. And I, and I found that uh, really striking. We went to a parade, a Christmas Day parade, and a, man, a young man came up to me and he asked what we were doing a documentary. I said, we're making one about the city. And he said, well, it's all messed up. And then he started telling me a story about how his sister passed away two days ago of an of a overdose. And it was just striking to think that that man would come up to us and tell us that. You know, and so we got into some really interesting, you know, conversations with people just by them being open with us. And that was that was fascinating, as well as, um, you know, how people would tell you about how good the city was. And, and most of it was that. So I think generally the stories that spark are the people who would just come up to us and speak to us and, and tell us, you know, the history of East Liverpool in their own way. And, um, you know, those are the stories that resonate for me. And it was that just going down there and spending those weeks with them was life changing for me. It really was. Thank you, Keenan. And thank you all so much for sharing your stories and your insights on your films. We sincerely appreciate it. So on behalf of CIFF, allow me to thank you all so much for taking the time to join us for today's roundtable. We also want to thank you, our audience, for joining us for today's Shorts Roundtable. Without your ongoing support, we couldn't be here to help you bring film home. We hope you'll consider supporting our challenge match again this year, presented by Cuyahoga Arts and Culture to support the future of our festival. Our goal is to reach $145,000 this year, and we are so grateful in advance for any amount you're able to contribute. To make a donation or to purchase tickets or to check out our entire schedule of filmmaker conversations, please visit us at our website at clevelandfilm.org. With that, please stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll look forward to seeing you back here again very soon. Thank you all so much for joining us.